these are my financial disclosures. So anytime we talk about therapy, a physician should think of a possible pathway the drug should follow in order to determine what is required or expected from the drug. And uh, so you have been already exposed to some of these basic concepts this morning regarding absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. <coughs> All such processes in sequence lead to a certain pharmacokinetic exposure, which could be just enough or uh, in excess or whatever the situation is. We as a HIV physician became accustomed to measure phenomena regarding the metabolism of drugs, of HIV drugs. Uh, there was a, a point in time, I would say 10 years ago, where two thirds of the HIV drugs we had at that time were a substrate of the, C, uh, I would say, cytochrome P450 system. Those two major phenomena were the one of inhibition that we took, a, we, we took advantage from for, for RNA, uh, reviving the category of process inhibitors that were initially used without booster and afterwards a booster was added. And the opposite is, uh, is a C3, uh, the C3A4 uh, uh, induction by inducers. So the two phenomena, I mean, just to recall a bit, this is uh, about inhibition of C3A4, is a major pattern we know with process inhibitors, with the use of ritonavir. What usually happens, we must envisage a tablet or a pill inside the uh, intestinal lumen being absorbed, and if it's a CYP3A4 substrate, there is some metabolism inside the intestinal cell and some activation of the PGP or possibly other transporters to extrude the drug from the cells and to, 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 to send the, the drug back in, in intestinal lumen. If you, and just a, a limited, depending on the drug, on the activity of these enzymes, and a li limited amount of drug usually reach the, uh, the, the portal circulation. But if you block it, you see here that you are going to have an increased absorption. And when the inhibitor join the, uh, uh, the, the, the hepatocytes, we also have a decreased clearance. So on the opposite side, what we have is the induction. Induction is, uh, is the opposite. It's not just a decrease of, uh, of activity. It's an increased activity. However, it's not the specular the specular uh, uh, activity of, of, of inhibition. What happens with uh, inducers like uh, the, the examples we, we better know are uh, rifampicin and, and, and favarins, is uh, that uh, induction is, uh, is the, um, in induction you see an increased synthesis of organelles, of uh, reticulum, and, and endothelial reticulum in cells that takes uh, a, a, a certain time to, 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 to really uh, determine an increased metabolic activity. For those physicians who are accustomed to deal with methadone, as, uh, as we have been for years in Italy, especially in Italy, I would say southern France and Spain, there were a lot of drug addicts until the, the early uh, of this millennium, the early years of this millennium. And uh, I remember when I was not aware of the uh, effect of a favorance of methadone in 1998, I, I remember a patient who uh, became to complain of withdrawal system not before the fifth day of uh, you know, a favorance intake, because it, it took a time, I mean, to generate these extra organelles just to increase the metabolic activity, this is what. And the same applies when you take the inducer off. It's not just, you know, 12 or 24 hours like in return of, for return of inhibition, it's a black or white phenomenon. Here it takes weeks to, uh, to go back to the basic activity. The picture is, uh, is further complicated by the knowledge that we uh, deal with transporters now. Uh, the knowledge about transporters has dramatically increased in the last 10 years. Uh, mainly driven from the prior knowledge on antineoplastic drugs, but what we, knew, we know, there are different two major superfamilies. There are unidirectional and bidirectional uh, carriers. 
energy required or with facilitated process. What is important, you know, from for a, a clinician is that these systems tend to to work in concerts with other metabolic systems. I mean. What you have seen before in the intestinal picture, there was a, a, a similar direction for the action of both C3A4 that was inhibited in, in, in the cell and the inhibition of PGP, which is a transporter. So this is a, a, a system that uh, has, a, has probably a, a major driver before uh, both uh, C3A4 and, and, and the transporter. And this driver sh should is likely to be a nuclear receptor like PXR or CAR. So, it's the most ancient uh, uh, defense mechanism of our cell. I would, I like to have this picture because I mean, now we're going to talk about orally administered drug mainly. However, this morning you have been already uh, instructed about the, the, the new uh, long-lasting formulation, slow-release formulation, intra, intra subcutaneous in, or intramuscular injection. So, and the question was raised by cotton inflection, it's a very good point, I think. What about rifampicin and carbotegravir if given orally or intramuscularly? So there is an example I, I, I just took here. She's exactly the same drug. If you look at medoxyprogesterone, if you give it orally, you got the, uh, the passage of an oral intestinal, 100% virtually, I would say, is the, the portal system. So all the, uh, the medroxyprogesterone being absorbed will be sieved by the liver and possibly metabolically processed. However, if you give the same, exactly the same drug, but intramuscular injection, what you see that the, uh, you bypass the liver actually, and at the end of the story, when you, you, uh, you join, you, the drug joins the, 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 uh, the liver, or I would say the port of circulation is uh, the rate of, uh, of, 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 of sieving by the liver is much lower. And if you look at the uh, Liverpool recommendation in the website, they actually differ for the two uh, pharmaceutical forms. They're exactly the same drug, but in the presence of four inducers like Delavirdin, uh, which is not, 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 not available in Europe, a Fabrins, a Triver in Neviropin, you see a uh, different, different recommendation. The funny thing is that there is a study in humans I mean, in women taking medroxyprogesterone acetate uh, in the intramuscular, there is not a study for those taking the same drug orally. But anyway, this is a subject to, to, to further comment, I hope, by Carter and Fletcher. Let's look now. Uh, now, this is what, uh, just the distribution of the flow at rest by the, uh, uh, according to the uh, arterial blood flow. So let's look just briefly at the, at the metabolism of uh, integrase inhibitors. Um, it's easy to talk about our drug interactions today because the, this uh, workshop is on integrase inhibitors. It's much easier. You see here, this is raltegravir, and is, uh, it is mainly metabolized by glucuronidation. There is no CYP3 or 4, CYP450 involvement. And um, there is some drug is renally excreted because the glucuronidation uh, generates a hydrosoluble metabolites that might be uh, cleared by the renal route. If we look at Elvitegravir, here the major route is not glucuronidation, although it's still, it's all, it is part of, of the metabolism. The major route is probably C3A, with some uh, uh, intervention, some, some interference with other isoenzymes and transporter. That's why this drug is co-formulated with a booster. It takes advantage of the C3A4 sensitivity of Elvitegravir, as different from the other two integrase inhibitors. The third one, Dolutegravir, is primarily glucuronated, but there is some contribution from C3A4 that to be considered here. But at the end of the story, you'll see uh, that there are no dif uh, relevant differences attributable to the C3A interference with Dolutegravir metabolism. So, what does this mean? What, we, uh, what, what is the, uh, the relevance in these three drugs? That glucuronidation, which is uh, otherwise an unusual metabolic way for antiretrovirals, is important for this category of drug. Uh, in general, this is, a, is no good, but just, it was just to say that one out of 10 drugs of those uh, uh, prescribed, in the most drugs prescribed in the United States in 2002 is, is a substrate of glucuronidation. And uh, 
we physicians know these enzymes because, I mean, for, for the definition, the genetic definition of, of, of some syndromes like Krieger nausea or Gilbert syndrome that are typical human uh, genetic de genetically determined disease associated to hyperbilirubinemia. And we know that these uh, enzymatic systems can be induced, and here you see here the, the, uh, the effect of rifampicin on two, on, on two patients. So uh, are uh, systems that are uh, vulnerable to both induction or inhibition. Uh, but to what extent, this is uh, the, 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 the question, uh, the, which, predictively, which is the magnitude of drug-drug interaction we might attribute, we might expect from a, a substrate of glucuronidation. It's not that big, actually, usually. There are uh, several pharmac uh, pharmacological reasons. I would not insist too much on this because I'm, I remain a clinician, however. But you see here that, uh, uh, in general, the substrate of glucuronidation, when exposed to an, an, an inducer or an inhibitor, the variation in AUC in PK exposure is not as large as we have observed in case of C3A4 substrate and C3A4 inhibition or induction. There are some pharmacological reasons. One is that uh, you see that the, uh, um, the dissociation constant, which is a sort of measure of tightness of, of, of drug receptor binding in, in such a case is, is, is rather tends to be higher for uh, glucuronidation substrate. And this means that the, uh, the effect on, uh, in, in terms of change in PK exposure is not going to be so important as compared to other examples we, have, uh, we became a customer to, to cope with. So, um, UGT substrate, often metabolized by multiple UGT, which, which does reduce the, the, the likelihood of, of, a, of a significant drug, drug interaction, uh, and uh, tend to have, uh, as I said, uh, a dissociation costs which are higher in, in vitro as compared to P450 enzymes. What about genetics of UGT101? We know something. We know something about the, 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 about the definition of Gilbert syndrome, Krigel and Krigel-Naya syndrome. We, there is something also about Dolutegravir, but even Raltegravir does not seem to be important. This is because of the general therapeutic index of integrase inhibitors. There is some increase in some people, but it's not so dramatic and is not so far has not so far been associated to any uh, uh, side effects. You see, this is a particular population, the Japanese population. You see, a distinct increase in a subset of, of, of patients that are defined by the polymorphins in UGT1 and 1.6. Um, so what is the translation of uh, difference between integrase inhibitors and other drugs? This is a table by the, the Liverpool web website grouping the uh, uh, drug drug interaction among antiretrovirals. You see here how cleaner the is the profile of dolutegravir and raltegravir as compared to a series of other drugs. The interference is as, as a much less as compared to other drug categories and to, to single drugs. Uh, this does not apply to alvitegravir because alvitegravir is combined with cobicistin and cobicistin clearly uh, is going to simulate what happened with process inhibitors and, and inhibition of, of CYP3A4. Uh, this also applies, I mean, in, in a broader range of, 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 of interaction. This is just a, an example. If you compare here uh, alvitegravir cobicista with dalutegravir or raltegravir, the uh, tendency to have the drug interaction is, is much higher. More or less, it's, uh, it's the same in my mind when I calculate what might happen with Stribolge and Voya. I just think to boosted process inhibitors, because more or less, there are very, very minimal differences. If you look at cobicista and ritonavir, from a chemical viewpoint, the differences are minimal. But it's important to, I mean, <coughs> to recall that uh, Cobicista has no intrinsic antiretroviral activity, but this has never been shown to be a problem for return, I think, in my opinion. And um, wh what you see here, pharmacologically speaking, I think uh, we have been a bit disappointed because we, we were expecting a, a, a newer booster, possibly having better properties than Ritonavir. Ritonavir is a good booster for the first 12 hours. This is a very short half-life. You could imagine in the years, uh, I would say, 2002 to 2003, to have a, a long-lasting booster, you know, reviving sacrinavir, reviving um, um, fosamprenavir, or, or drugs we, 
we, we still need it at that time. So, but more or less, it's the same. You see that the basic pharmaco pharmacological features are more or less the same. And uh, it does the same as Ritonavir in boosting uh, Alvitegravir as required. And even here now, there are two core formulations available with a PI and a new booster copy. One is Athazanavir. You see here the exposures is more or less comparable. There's slightly less, but it doesn't seem to be important when you combine the Runavir copy system that you compare to the run of a return of it. This is another co-formulation. Uh, possibly a, a single tablet regimen will follow here by adding to the run of a copy system the, the, the new NRTI's backbone uh, consisting of amtricitabine and, and um, turn off of the alpha. Uh, but, however, is there any difference? I would say no. I mean, uh, can, uh, uh, Chiara Carcelli, who works with us in Torino, is a chemist pharmacist, has been working with Marco Sicardi in Liverpool for, for a period, and they have been working in a, on cryopreserved human hepatocytes to see whether they, the interference with, with the translation of critical genes uh, was, was, was different between COBE and Ritonavir, taking as a positive control rifampicin. They analyzed uh, 84 genes, and then the end, at the end of the story, you're taking the activation of rifampicin as a control. You don't see too many differences in between COBE and Ritonavir. The, the more you look at possible differences, the less you find. So at the end of the story, I don't think th this will change the story of HIV therapy in terms of, of, of a new booster. But does explain how uh, alvitegravir actually interacts with other drugs as compared to raltegravir and dolutegravir. So this is a, a general landscape of possible drug-drug interaction or major drug-drug interaction of integrase inhibitors. Not surprisingly, the, 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 longer list, the longest list is for alvitegravir COBI. Uh, there are some common, common features. If you take antacids, you have to plan a staggered a staggered uh, uh, administration, just you take two hours before or six hours afterwards, not to interfere with the absorption, because uh, the, you might have some degree of reduction in, 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 uh, in drug absorption. Um, the other point is rifampicin. Rifampicin is interesting. We know that <clears throat> rifampicin could be an inducer also of glucuronidation. And uh, you know there are some studies and the possibility to, to, to have an alternative to hefavirenz as a drug to combine with an anti-TB treatment. You see, this is the interaction between raltegravir and rifampicin. It's not so dramatic as seen with the prothesis inhibitors. However, there is some decline. That, that's why it has been suggested to uh, double the dose. A trial has been done which was uh, reasonably successful. You see here, more or less, the, the, the concentration at the end of the dosing interval is, is the same between the two doses, but the AUC is much higher in case of uh, 800 milligram BID. This was the trial, a very simple one, 50 patients per arm, just a proof of concept, a pilot trial. And the, the results were, were not so bad, but uh, were much clearer at the week 24 than at week 48. You see, at week 24, you have a an apparent uh, tendency to, uh, to an advantage with uh, raltegravir with both dosage, uh, while the 800 milligram BID at the end seems to perform a bit worse. There's probably mm, several problems of adherence and so on. The thing is that, I mean, this is a, 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 these are good news that in, in appropriate hands, raltegravir can be used as a companion drug in those requiring at the, at, the, at the same time, anti-TB and anti-HIV treatment. The same applies to, to dolutegravir. And on this point, it's also nice to know that rifabutis is also compatible with the integrase inhibitors. The same applies to raltegravir, but does not apply because of the COBI presence with, with, with stribal. You know that the interaction uh, is not like rifampicin with substrate, with rifabutin is also a, a two-way interaction. You might see an increased level of rifabutin, so, so you have to take care uh, because the, you risk some, some side effects, even severe like optic neuritis, so you have to be careful. Um, the other thing is that concerning the effect of other inducers, or, or on, on, uh, this is dolutegravir, you see some effect of a favorance, 
but is unlikely to be used with deltagravir in the, in the clinical scenario. And the same applies to etravirine, but again, etravirine is mostly used in association with the boosted PIs. If the boosted PIs is there, there are no problems in exposure of dolutegravir. This is well, there's, in this there is some subtle difference between dolutegravir and raltegravir. Raltegravir is a pure glucuronidation subset, while uh, in case of dolutegravir there is some participation of C3A4. Uh, again, looking at the other side of the, of the moon, I mean, instead of induction inhibition, I mean, you know that we have a drug, atazanavir, which is an, an, an inhibitor of glucuronidation. And we did some exercise in Torino to see whether there was some advantage in using atazanavir with raltegravir. This was half a dose of raltegravir, and we had more or less, when given with atazanavir, the same exposure as we had with BID. This could be useful in case you want to have a higher PK exposure. And uh, this more or less a similar, uh, a similar experiment was done with, the, with friends in, 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 in Liverpool. And you see here, further to the inter, interpatient variability, there was a difference of exposure when given with athazanavir. The same also applies with uh, dolutegravir, as is much more interesting because, I mean, in, in case of patient with extreme genetic, viral genetic profile, when you might need a very higher exposure. So, the uh, last point concerning the drug interaction and integrase inhibitors is the possible effect of OCT, uh, organocationic transporter 2 inhibition by dolutegravir, especially on a widely used drug like metformin. Metformin, you know, is an anti-diabetic drug widely used for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. And there is an interaction because, I mean, metformin is partially excreted by secretion passing through the OCT2. So if you block that transporter, you get higher levels in plasma. What does happen? You might have a double exposure. It's not just insulin that you get a hypoglycemic crisis. It's a different drug. It doesn't work so, 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 so fastly. However, you might need to reduce the doses of metformin. In clinical practice, it's less than a problem. We got a customer to give half of the dose of metformin. And on the average, it does seem to work. This is what we see. Another a clinically important phenomenon is that by interfering with OCT2, you also increase what? You increase creatinine values because 15% of creatinine is cleared by secretion, by tubular secretion, you see, you see there. If you block OCT2, you have more creatinine that have to be filtered by the glomerulus. That's why you get hypercreatinemia. This is what happens in, 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 the, uh, in, the, in the single trial there. You see there is no tenophobia around, just the back of the N3 TC, and you have a, a substantial increase in creatinine in those taking dolutegravir. Uh, in, in, in the same setting, it's also nice to know that uh, with the exception of, of, of Stribil so far, I mean, the uh, compatibility of integrase inhibitor with tenophobia is substantial as compared to other drugs. Uh, as, as, as we know that uh, there seems to be a, a, a relationship between tenophobia plasma exposure and the risk of tubular toxicity as well as a, or of reduction of bone mineral density, it is nice to note that in case of administration of raltegravir and dolutegravir, the plasma exposure of tenophobia tends to be lower as compared to other drugs. And this also has been demonstrated, this is probably the largest trial uh, that, that, that actually took into consideration a, a very sensible var variable in terms of uh, metabolic profile. You see here the reduction in bone mineral density in the ARDEN trial. Three arms, in two arms, boosted process inhibitors were used. In the third arm, raltegravir. The common background was tenofovir and tricetabine. And you see here a substantial, uh, I would say, a, a, a lesser a significantly lesser effect on bone mineral density reduction in those taking raltegravir. So you were exposed equally to tenofovir, but those taking raltegravir did actually fairly better in terms of bone mineral reduction. So the last message, drug-drug interaction, whatever you talk about, you have to consider, uh, okay, that, I mean, the, the likelihood of uh, uh, having or not a significant effect, it depends on mainly on the therapeutic index of the drug. So if you have a drug with a very narrow therapeutic index, like it might be the case of uh, digoxin, so the problems might be there, even with 5% of, uh, of, of uh, variation in PK exposure. This is, you know, azunafravir, anti-HCV drug. 
now distributed in Europe. However, this is, there is a very small increase in digoxin exposure in terms of AUC that was considered to be, to be significant. While, you know, look at drugs like raltegravir or dolutegravir with a very a huge inhibitory quotient. When you have, uh, I mean, the same activity with doses up to four times lower in terms of virological suppression. And you do not have any uh, concentration related toxicity. So it, clearly the therapeutic index is going much uh, larger. So all the calculation you have to make are much simpler. Thank you for your kind attention.